Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember, check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med search mastery courses. Plus, and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. Now first up are NSAIDs given for mild to moderate pain. So we made the acronym NSEC to help you remember all the names of NSAIDs. So N for naproxen. Guys, big NCLEX tip right there. The number one NSAID given is naproxen according to question banks. S is for salicylic acid, aka aspirin. And A for acetosalicylic acid, again, aspirin. Guys, this is also an antiplatelet used to thin the blood. And I is for ibuprofen and indomethazine, which everyone should know ibuprofen. Now, a key one is K for ketorolac. Brand name is Toradol. This is the only one we can actually give through an IV. Now, the indication is we give to reduce a fever, known as an antipyretic. So basically a fever reducer, as well as anti-inflammation, typically given for gout and arthritis like an RA. Now guys, a common HESI and ATI question usually has something like this. Gout teaching has been effective when a patient states, I can use ibuprofen or naproxen for pain. Yes, because gout and arthritis usually indicates inflammation. Or a patient with RA, rheumatoid arthritis, guys, NSAIDs relieve the symptoms. Now, as far as the mechanism of action, NSAIDs decrease prostaglandin response. So, to decrease this pain and inflammation, you can think prostaglandins are like a big party popper that basically puff up the body and contribute to inflammation. Also, they decrease platelet aggregation, especially with aspirin, which leads to a big risk for bleeds. So to help you remember this and all the key points for your exams, we use the acronym NSAIDs. N for it's not good for the entire body. We're talking GI bleeds, so it's bad for ulcers. Bad for the lungs, we have bronchospasms, so it's bad for asthmatic patients. Bad for the heart because it leads to hypertension and worsening heart failure. Talk about kidney clogging, guys, it increases creatinine and BUN, the two kidney labs, as well as blood clots. So guys, the key point here is we never take two NSAIDs simultaneously. Use the lowest dose for the shortest amount of time possible. Now, S is for sticky blood, known as a thrombosis. Guys, again, increased risk for clots. So it's bad for patients with a clot history, like an MI or a heart clot, a stroke or CVA, basically a brain clot, and even DVTs and PEs. Now again, aspirin is the weird one here. It's kind of the hybrid of the group, and it's used to thin the blood for cardiac patients. But we cover more of that in detail in its own lecture. Now A is for asthma, guys. Big NCLEX tip here. Leading to bronchospasm. So just remember... NSAIDs are not safe for asthma. Key terms are asthma and nasal polyps. The nurse should clarify the order. Now, this info has been mentioned various times throughout many different quiz banks. So, the common question is a patient with asthma or nasal polyps, usually the options are to use acetaminophen instead of an NSAID. Now, I is for increased bleed risk. Again, another big NCLEX tip here. So we monitor and, key term, notify the HCP for all types of bleedings. So keywords for bleeding is easy bruising, tarry stool, and coffee ground emesis, usually indicating a GI bleed. Now, since NSAIDs block prostaglandins, which protects the lining of the stomach, guys, we avoid peptic ulcer patients leading to GI bleeding. And we always take this medication with food, never on an empty stomach. But if the patient is on an acid reducer, like a PPI, then it's okay to use an NSAID. Now the big key points, we avoid ego vitamins. So guys, no vitamin E, ginkgo, garlic, and even omega-3 oils. Kaplan states that these should not be mixed with NSAIDs, 
due to the increased bleed risk. Now, the HESI also asked about ibuprofen. So, here's some key words here. Do not take on an empty stomach. Perfect. Patient with acid reflux on renatidine, a PPI. Yes, it's okay to take. And I occasionally use ibuprofen for my knees with a rheumatoid arthritis patient. So yeah, that's perfect. Now D is for dysfunctional kidneys. Again, renal injury with long-term use, aka nephrotoxicity. So we avoid renal patients. Guys, we always use acetaminophen for fever with patients with renal disease. So memory tricks here for the labs for renals. Creatinine over 1.3 means a bad kidney. Urine output 30 mLs or less means the kidneys are in distress. And K for catorolac, K for kills the kidneys. Now finally, S is for swelling heart, for CHF and hypertension worsening. Most over-the-counter NSAIDs contain sodium, which swell the body with fluid, and really bad for heart patients, which exacerbates the fluid overload, leading to worsened hypertension. So guys, key words here. Clients with long-term hypertension or cardiovascular disease say no to the NSAIDs. If the patient is taking NSAIDs, then we notify the HCP. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.